G'day, I'm just going to have a quick chat about uh, Stellar Evolution or a star's life cycle. Uh, I'll be using the Hersbrunk Russell diagram, which is basically just a graph with temperature versus luminosity, which shows you where a star will sit. Um, down in this region of the graph, we've got very high temperatures and low luminosity, and this is the region where we'd find stars like white dwarfs. Um, up in this region here, um, as you can see, there's uh, very low temperatures and very high luminosities. This would be red giants like Betelgeuse. Um, the rest of the stars sort of fit along the main sequence um, line. So these sort of all fit in the same mathematical confinements. Um, now, what happens at the beginning of a star's life cycle is a cloud of gas will collapse in on itself due to gravity. Uh, eventually, if the cloud is big enough and there's enough mass, the core of that cloud of gas will get temperatures and pressures high enough to, to start fusing hydrogen into helium. Now, that's called ignition and that's essentially the start of the life of a star. Um, <clears throat> now, this is where our sun is at the moment and now luminosity is scaled off the sun's luminosity, so one is where the sun is and we'll sit around here about 5,700 degrees Kelvin. Um, so this is where we're at now. We're converting, we're fusing hydrogen into helium in the core of our sun. And uh, now every time that fusion process take, takes place, a little bit of mass is lost, which means the sun's losing about 4.2 million ton of mass every second. Um, eventually, that fusion's gonna go get to a point where the entire core of hydrogen have, has fused into helium. That means that fusion process is going to be dramatically decreased and, and almost to a point where it's starting to cease. Um, what that means for, for a star is that pressure, that potential energy or that gravitational energy outside exerting in on the core is going to become stronger than the pressure from the core itself due to the fusion, which means the core is going to start to collapse. Now, when that core starts to collapse, what we've got happen is two very interesting things. One, the actual star itself will cool and expand. Now, what's happening is as that core collapses, the hydrogen that was outside of that core will start coming into an environment that's hot enough and, and has enough pressure to start the fusion process again. So that excessive fusion is going to increase the pressure within the star and that's going to expand it greatly. Now, as it expands, as you can see, it's going to cool. Now, that expansion and that cooling is, is a pretty poor representation of what's happening in, in the core of the star. So, at this point, we now have an outer shell of hydrogen fusing with an inert shell of helium. Now, what's going to happen is because of that excess pressure and excess temperature, Eventually, that helium is going to get hot enough to start fusing into carbon. Now, as this happens, this, the star itself will shrink, and as you can see, it goes up in temperature. Now, it will lose a little bit of luminosity, but what that means now is we now have a hydrogen shell fusing into helium, which is fusing into carbon, which is inert. Now, over time, This ex extra shell is going to create extra pressure, extra heat, and again, the star is going to expand. Um, however, this carbon core um, will never find temperatures hot enough to start fusing the carbon, which means eventually you're just going to be left with a carbon core. Now, what's going to happen is the star will spit off the outer shells, and that will res result in a planetary nebula. Now, as that happens, we're going to lose luminosity and eventually we're going to lose temperature. And what we'll be left with is an inert carbon, red hot burning ball of carbon, which will eventually just cool and dim and fade away. Um, now that's a low mass stellar evolution. That's the stellar evolution of, of something the size of our, our sun. What will happen in a, in a high mass stellar evolution, like, let's talk about something 20 times the size of the sun. That core, that carbon core, will have enough pressure from the, the excess gravitational, the excess weight and the mass and the pressure and that core will start fusing into oxygen. Now what that means is this process of 
core collapsing and then more things igniting, heavy elements fusing and then expanding and collapsing and then this, this process will happen more and more times in a larger star and eventually you're going to have heavier and heavier and heavier elements to the point where you will have hydrogen burning, fusing into helium, fusing into carbon, fusing into oxygen, fusing into neon and this will just keep going and keep going and keep going until eventually you're left with an iron core. Now once you've got an iron core in the centre of a star, this creates a problem. Now the fusion of iron doesn't create enough energy to compete with this epic, epic potential energy, like this gravitational force that's forcing itself into the core of the star. Now when that happens, we're talking hundreds of times the size of our sun now, what will happen is that core will just be overwhelmed and it'll collapse and this will result in an epic, epic explosion known as a supernova. Now I think you should go and Google images like Crab Nebula or Supernova and have a look at what this does because this is probably one of the most amazing and biggest explosions that we know of. And that's pretty much stellar evolution of low mass and high mass stars according to the Hertzsprung or utilising the Hertzsprung-Russell. I hope you had fun.